If you follow my channel in the past, you know I'm a sucker for a good dash cam. I love playing with these things, and this one caught my interest, and I'm happy to have the opportunity to check it out. So we've got our normal front-facing camera here, and of course we have a rear-facing camera. But this one, wrapped in the same package, has a third camera inside the cabin of the car. And not only that, it's got infrared night vision. So when blackboxmycar.com reached out and asked if I wanted to test out this camera, I was like, I don't know if I have a use for it. I don't drive Uber. You know, I don't have a need to record the cabin. But then I was thinking about it. How many times have I gone to the track and wanted to record the front, the rear, and the interior of the car? So if this sounds like something that would interest you, sit back, relax, and enjoy. If not, I'll catch you guys in the next one. For when a two camera dash cam system just isn't enough, ZenFox comes on the scene with the ZenFox T3 three camera dash cam system. Right here we've got the rear facing camera. It's a 1080p 30 frame per second camera. It sticks to either the windshield or the rear deck trim. You've got the big in your face, I am recording you and there's nothing you can do to hide it, ZenFox. T3 main unit. It's got a front facing camera which is 1440 60. If you use the rear facing camera, it's 1440 30 frames per second. And the inside camera has an IR cutoff, so it's got great night vision and also color filming during the day. It also has all the latest and greatest features like Wi Fi, even 5 gigahertz Wi Fi, and GPS. Cool thing about this camera is it has a screen on it and all the controls, so you don't really need to pull out your phone unless you want to do some really good fine-tuning adjustments. Inside the box you're going to find everything you need to do the installation except for the hardwire kit. The hardwire kit is required to do a parking mode which I recommend against and I'll explain more on that in a few minutes. But it does come with the cigarette lighter plug that turns the camera on and off with the car. This is a capacitor based camera so there's no battery to melt in your car. It will shut off shortly after you shut the car off. This kit comes with a few bonus features like extra mounts and extra sticky pads. It comes with an interior trim tool and a micro SD reader. Another thing it doesn't come with is a micro SD card. So you're going to have to head out and pick up your own micro SD. My recommendation would be the Lexar. I'll drop a link to those in the description. I've been using those in all my dash cams and GoPros and everything else. And they've lasted for years, even in the hot sun when running parking mode. So it's an excellent choice and it'll be down in the description below along with a link to this camera and my affiliate link to blackboxmycar.com where any purchases you make I get a small percentage of that to help out the channel. Now installing these cameras is super easy. I've done videos on this in the past where I show you how to hide all the wires so you don't see anything in your interior except for this specific camera it's not as discreet as some of the other ones. It's more of an in your face I am recording you type of camera. So we're not going to be able to hide this one, but I'm going to give you a rundown, show you how and exactly where I mounted it and what it looks like while we're driving. And of course, after two months of use, I'll give you my impressions of the camera. One last thing going back to the using it for parking mode. I've read a lot on different forums and different web chats about the fact that the Zen Fox T3 overheats when sitting in the sun. And unfortunately, I haven't had the opportunity to test it because I'm in the New Jersey winters. But everybody is saying if you want to use this for parking mode, this might not be the camera for you. But it works great otherwise. So camera placement for this cam was a bit different than normal. Normally, I like a nice hidden discrete dash cam. But this one, you really need to have that upper camera recording the people or the seats in the car. So this has to go for a little bit more of a in-your-face type of install. Now, I don't recommend putting it on the driver's side because in a lot of states, having something on the windshield in front of the driver is not legal and it's an obstruction. So what I wound up doing was I wound up putting it on the passenger side. I had to move my Easy Pass and a few other things, but I got a really good semi-hidden spot. It wasn't in my view the driver at all, but again, couldn't hide it like I normally like to. One of my favorite tests for a dash cam is either an evening or a morning drive when the sun is nice and low in the sky. This is when you get the break where the sun 
kind of flashes quickly between trees and it tends to gleam the camera. This kind of shows you how fast the camera can recover from a bright light to a dim light. And this camera does extremely well at this. All right, let's talk front facing camera. We've got a 1440, 30 frames per second because I have the rear camera connected. If you disconnect the rear camera, you can go up to 1440, 60. The camera does really well. Great daytime footage, nice, crisp, clear, where you can actually read the license plates in the video footage. Now YouTube, of course, compresses these videos and because I'm recording at 1440, then downscaling to 1080p, you're not gonna get the same effect. So a little bit later in the video, I'm gonna show you a bunch of license plates I captured by doing screen grabs of the actual video footage and then putting them into this video. So we'll get to that in a little bit. Daytime recording on this thing is excellent. Audio is really good. Uh, overall, I'm very pleased with this camera. It's better than a lot of the ones that I've tested, which is pretty cool. I mean, it is big, but it is a really good recording quality on the front facing camera. The rear camera also does amazing daytime footage. Now this is behind the Magnum window, which is heavily tinted. So as you can see, daytime footage with a tinted window still looks great. And again, I've got some captures of license plates in the rear camera coming up later in the video. Once you get over the weirdness of being recorded while you drive, it, you really don't notice the camera anymore. Uh, today we are on a quick journey to drop off Ursula, our passenger, to the Amazon Dropbox because the outer packaging was damaged. And also you can see here I'm wearing my WorkPlay Drive branded merch. If you're interested, it's in the description below. All right, so we had to mute the interior audio for this one because I had some copyright music playing. So, but going on to the day or sorry, the nighttime footage again, nice and clear. It's got the Sony Starvis sensor. So we are going to get the almost clear as possible image you can. I'll give you some license plate photos later on in this video here. But overall, as you can see, it looks good. Not too much gleaming from the other lights, the tail lights, the street lights, overall nice clean picture and we'll flip it around to that rear camera again this is the perfect scenario with a nice fresh clean window obviously that doesn't happen so let's show you what a dirty window looks like now keep in mind this isn't a flaw of the camera it's just a quick reminder to make sure your windows are clean to get the best quality image out of any camera that you purchase like the last image that you just saw with the dirty window it's a lot later in the evening and also something to notice is I have much brighter headlights. I switched from halogens, which were really dim, to high output LEDs. So I got much more, much brighter light in front of me. But again, this is the performance of the camera while driving later in the evening. One important thing to note about this camera, as well as almost every camera on the market, it is near, or let's say very, very difficult to capture a license plate when you are in a situation where the headlights are coming directly at you. The inside camera performs very well at night, keeps the car nicely lit. One of the things you got to be very careful of is when you position the light, you want to make sure those IR sensors are not shining on the areas near the camera. Otherwise, you're going to get a washout video footage like this. But if you align it correctly using the screen or the phone, just make sure you check it at night so you don't have the washout issue. But overall, great footage inside the car day and night. All right, so as requested in all my previous videos, the license plate segment. To give you an idea of what I've done here is I've taken the videos from the camera. I played them in a free VLC media player, which is available on the web. I did a screen capture, and all I did was zoom in on the license plate and paste it on top of the video image. This capture right here is at a relatively slow speed, 15 miles an hour, with the car approaching at a slow speed as well, and about 15 feet away. This next capture is at a much higher speed, over 40 miles an hour with the car approaching at the same speed. Again, you can still read the license plates. And here is a rear in motion license plate capture. Nighttime capture struggles a little bit, but you can still see clear plates just at a much closer distance than during the day. And lastly, for nighttime rear plate capture, Cars have to be much closer to get a clear reading on the plate. Again, no trickery here. These are just screenshots 
zoomed in like any person would do with free applications you can get on your Windows PC. So let's talk about my overall opinion of the camera. A three camera dash cam system that outputs three individual videos onto a single SD card and it does a great job of it. Great image quality, great audio, very good license plate capture compared to other cameras. If you're looking for a three camera system, I would recommend this one. Now to quickly touch on the app that comes with this camera, it's uh, the iPhone app is the one I'm using. Uh, first thing I did was I swapped the camera from 2.4 gigahertz to 5 gigahertz. With the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, the videos download insanely fast. This is sped up, but the real time is on screen. One minute, 24 seconds to download a three minute video, 977 megabytes. That is fast. I want to say thank you to blackboxmycar.com again for sending me this camera to check out. Anyone in the market for a dash cam, I highly recommend going to them. I've been working with them for, I think, about two years now. They have been a great resource. Everyone I've sent there, they have helped out, answered questions. They're not just there to sell you a camera. They're there to help you make the decision of the camera that you want. I don't care if it's the cheapest camera or the most expensive camera. Don't drive without one. I've been driving with dash cams in all my cars for years, and when I drive and travel, I take a portable dash cam with me as well. We had an accident a few years ago. Gentleman ran a red light. It was a hit and run, and they lied and said my wife ran the red light. We used the footage from our cheap, under $100 dash cam to not only prove the person driving, but when he told the insurance company that my wife ran the red light and they stopped payment, I was able to send them a video, a one minute video that showed him running the red light, my wife hitting him, and within hours we had our check to pay off the car, which now bought us the Magnum. So get a dash cam, even if it's under a hundred bucks. The folks at blackboxmycar.com will help you out. There's an affiliate link in the description below. You click on that link and whatever you purchase goes to help out the channel and any applicable discounts I'll have in that description below as well. All right, that's it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, gently press that like button. If you're stopping by for the first time, don't forget to check out my content and consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching.